Well, good morning. Um, my name is Lucia Dolce. I'm the convener of the MA Buddhist Studies here at SOAS. And um, I'd like to welcome you to the SOAS virtual space. Um, so, and welcome to the Buddhist, to the program. Um, you may have already read in, um, in information on the program that this is a, a most comprehensive program in Buddhist studies in the UK. Um, it's housed within the School of History, Religions and Philosophy, and is supported by a language teaching that includes most of the languages of Buddhism. Um, and as an extracurricular um, as, uh, activity, we have also a, a research center, Buddhist Studies Research Center, which offers uh, other opportunity to engage further with the study of Buddhism. So what I would like to do today is to, um, to say a few things of what you can expect from the MA Buddhist Studies and to speak a bit about the uh, uh, program structure. So let me start with the first uh, point. How do we study Buddhism? Um, we take Buddhist studies as a field. Buddhist studies is not a discipline. Uh, but it can be approached from various uh, disciplinary perspectives. Uh, so I think we can consider it an interdisciplinary uh, uh, field of inquiry uh, where it is possible to combine historical, philosophical, uh, ritual, material, culture approach, uh, approaches, or to choose any of these. Uh, the uh, basic approach at SOAS is a critical one, uh, which, which I mean that we look at the traditions respectfully, but we also are interested in the academic studies of these traditions and the consequences that the study of Buddhism has had for the study of the um, areas where Buddhism has uh, um, impacted and the study of religion or philosophy in its whole. Um, we are also very much interested in placing Buddhism in the areas where it uh, developed. Um, so we, we would be looking at Buddhism not in the abstract, but as a living religion. So with attention to uh, not only the uh, scriptural literature, the um, textual literature, the philosophical thoughts, but also the practices of the Buddhists. Um, in the countries where, um, where they existed today, where they have existed in the past. Um, another very important point about our approach is that uh, we, we do pay attention to the development of scholarship, not only in the West, but also in the East, if you allow me these uh, broad categories, East and West. And, uh, and here, um, I think we need to note the importance um, of uh, uh, Asian scholarship, especially um, Japanese scholarship, but also Chinese scholarship more recently in the, for the understanding, for general understanding of Buddhism. Um, all our uh, faculty, the, the members of staff who will be teaching in this program um, are uh, themselves researchers in, the study, in one or the other um, form of Buddhism. So the teaching in the program is based on research and first-hand knowledge of the field, uh, which, which brings a lot of advantages because you have a very uh, um, sort of a, a fresh and uh, um, up-to-date um, uh, approach, uh, knowledge of the field. Um, now, what else to say about Buddhism? I, I, we we I used to, the word Buddhism in the singular, but we do also need to, to uh, understand the diversity of Buddhism and its historical and geographical development. So we can as well speak of Buddhism as of Buddhisms in the plural. This means that Buddhism has both a, a transnational dimension, it's a pan Asian religion that started in India, Central Asia, and moved to Southeast Asia, and uh, uh, what is called Northeast Asia, so the, 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 yeah, up to the far, uh, far East Asia. And from there, it moved to Europe and to America. 
So we can think of it as a translational religion, as a translational uh, a philosophical code, but it also has very important local incarnations. So this dynamic between the transactional aspects and the very local aspects is a very important as, uh, uh, point to, to note in the study of Buddhism. And this brings also a lot of uh, uh, what I call ambiguities and contradictions uh, um, for, uh, in how we represent Buddhism. Buddhism is at the same time one and many. Buddhism engages with the construction of the political world of, the so of society and therefore it takes different forms. Uh, so while studying Buddhism, we can also, uh, uh, while studying Buddhism, we can also study um, aspects of uh, the interface between religion and politics, um, but also more broadly about the construction of gender, theories on the environment and so on. So uh, let me pass on now to the, uh, the structure of the program. As I said, the program is uh, based in the uh, School of uh, uh, History, Religions and Philosophy, which is abbreviated as HRP. Um, and the core teaching team uh, for last year, for this year, and, and I'm saying this because it may be, uh, um, you know, there may be additions uh, in the coming years, is uh, uh, made of three uh, uh, members of staff. Uh, myself, um, Lucia Dolce, I'm working on Japan mainly with some uh, 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 sort of foreign, uh, um, the Chinese and Korean, so the Sino, the Sinitic world of Buddhists. Uh, Dr. Travanin, Stefania Travanin, works on China, and uh, uh, Professor Urish Pagel, who is also the head of the department, who works on India and Tibet. So this is the core team uh, in, in HRP, but we are very lucky to have uh, several colleagues who work uh, on different aspects of Buddhism in other departments. And I uh, thought I would mention here, um, especially the art history department, where there are uh, two uh, colleagues with whom we collaborate and whose classes are included in our program. Um, and that is uh, Dr. Uh, Christian Lutzantis, uh, who is a, a specialist in Tibet and Himalaya area, and Professor Ashley Thompson, who works on Southeast Asia. So this is a, a pretty uh, substantial uh, uh, team of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, researchers um, whose first research is on Buddhists. Now, the structure of the program uh, that you would have seen already from the website, I hope you have already familiarized yourself with uh, uh, what is on the website so that um, there are questions or, or queries about it uh, that can be solved uh, during this presentation. Uh, the basic structure of the MA with the studies follows uh, the structure of all MAs at SOAS, of most MAs at SOAS. Um, it, you, you need to take taught modules to the equivalent of 120 credits, uh, plus a dissertation of 10,000 words that is uh, worth it to 60 credits. There are different types of module, uh, modules, um, core modules, which means are the modules that you have to take, everyone who takes, uh, who is in the program has to take. And then there are uh, elective modules so that you can choose from a pool of uh, um, of um, options within uh, the departments that work on uh, uh, Buddhist studies or um, on related subjects. And then there are open options. Um, that means uh, um, that you have uh, a maximum of 30 credits that you can take across uh, from courses offered across the school. So um, when we come to what exactly these modules are, um, the core course of the program, so the compulsory core course, is called Critical Concept in Buddhist Studies. Um, this is a, especially a methodological course that looks at some concepts, some ideas um, that are relevant for the study of Buddhist studies and of uh, Buddhism, the study of Buddhism, and looks at them from um, well, from this different perspectives, basically. Uh, so, for instance, we would be looking at what it means a uh, text, what it means uh, image, what it means ritual in the case of Buddhism. 
Uh, and again, what is society, what is uh, uh, institution within the world of Buddhism. Um, th this is a course that I convene at the moment, and uh, uh, it normally uh, has just students from the MA, uh, Buddhist studies, uh, although some students of uh, a related MA um, are also uh, allowed to take it. Then the other courses of uh, um, on the program are more area based. Um, so we have one course on India and Tibet that is uh, uh, called Buddhist meditation in India and Tibet. I would look at Buddhism in these areas uh, uh, through the uh, focus on uh, meditation, that we have a course on East Asian Buddhist thought that uh, covers uh, uh, one tradition within the broader East Asian world, every uh, different tradition, um, that we will have uh, uh, thematic courses on China and Japan, Chinese Buddhist history and themes and religious practice in Japan, text, text rituals and believers. So with this, uh, I think we cover the great majority of uh, um, Buddhist Asia. Um, there are other modules in the program that are either uh, on related tradition or on comparative perspectives. And I've given here some examples of the most of those that are most commonly taken by students who are who modules that students have found through the years most useful. Um, and those are uh, of modules on Taoists, uh, that is of interest for those of working on East Asia, um, religions of ancient India that covers so all other religions that grew up um, in the Indian continent at the moment of the um, development of Buddhism, and uh, um, origins of, uh, and development of yoga in ancient India. Um, as I said earlier on, there are also modules in art history that are uh, Buddhist specific. And uh, again, there are uh, uh, changes uh, uh, from one year to another in the offering uh, that, that we uh, can make available, but uh, basically um, these are available courses. Uh, one covers the Gandharan art, one uh, covers the Tibetan, uh, well, Tibetan and Himalayan areas uh, of, uh, of Buddhism, and that's what is called interpreting visual expressions of the mandala. And another one, the art of the maritime uh, Silk Road. So the, so the so-called Southern, um, uh, Southern way of development, Southern route of development of Buddhism. Um, so, so far for the more conceptual courses, um, next to them, we offer um, a number of canonical and spoken languages of the Buddhist world. Um, and I hope that I've written all of those that are on offer at this moment. So we have Sanskrit, Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Burmese, Vietnamese, and Thai at this moment. Um, and we hope to offer um, two missing ones next year again. Um, and as for the upper options, I, I didn't write them here, but uh, um, you will be uh, you will be allowed to take other options uh, if you have space and if they are relevant to uh, what you want to do in the MA through consultation with the convener. Now, how do you go around to choosing uh, these uh, uh, modules? Uh, one very important aspect of uh, the MA program at SOAS is that at the same time, focused and flexible. Uh, so it does allow you to, uh, let's say, build your own portfolio. And uh, I would like to give you an example of how you can do that. And I've taken as an example, uh, um, uh, a hypothetical student who wants to, um, concentrate on the development of Buddhism in Japan. And I've done that because obviously it's my own field of research. Um, so you would be taking on top of the core course of the program, Critical Concept in Buddhist Studies, um, the two courses that are mostly most relevant. So the, um, uh, the course on uh, uh, that is dedicated to Japanese religions, is religious practice in Japan that is uh, a um, 
a 30 credits course, what we call a full unit, which means that it goes across the entire year. And uh, this course has a both historical and contemporary um, dimension and introduces different uh, theoretical perspectives to the study of Buddhism. And then you will take also uh, East Asian Buddhist thought, which is uh, uh, 30, uh, 15 credits, so half a unit, it means it is uh, offered in one term, uh, which, as I said, focused on one tradition of the Sino, uh, uh, well, of Sino Japanese, uh, um, of Sino Japanese Buddhism. Uh, then, and, and this is where the choice, the most interesting choice comes to, you just think of how to complement the very focused study of Buddhism in Japan uh, with either uh, other uh, uh, related um, tradition in the regional context. So let's say the Semitic world, and here you could do something like Buddhism in China or Taoism or something more specific in Japan, for instance, Japanese pre-modern uh, literature, if you are interested uh, in the pre-modern development or modern, uh, uh, or modern society, if you are interested in contemporary uh, uh, expressions. Um, or you can go through more specific themes related to religion. So for instance, uh, you could uh, join the course on the expression of mandalas if you are interested in a more um, uh, visual, in the more visual aspect of Buddhism, or uh, you can do religions of India if you are interested in looking at the origins of Buddhism or you know, Buddhist meditation in India or something like that. Um, and finally, um, if you have never uh, uh, studied uh, lang the languages of Buddhism, or if you have studied them and you want to improve your um, knowledge, you can take uh, courses uh, in the primary languages, in this case of Japanese Buddhism. Uh, so we offer classical Chinese, classical Japanese, and of course, modern Japanese at all levels. Um, and the, the, the insertion of language has been very important for those students who take this MA as a um, as a step towards a PhD, a further study in, uh, in the field. Um, as you may, uh, may know, or maybe not, maybe I'll say that the MA um, programs, and in particular the MA Buddhist Studies, uh, has this double function of being just further education for anyone who has done a bit of religion or even a bit of Buddhism and wants to know in more details one or the other tradition, uh, but also um, uh, as a, as a, a uh, sort of a filling the gaps uh, kind of course for those who have, for instance, a, um, a already a BA in Japanese studies or have done a BA in history in, in, uh, in Asia and want to concentrate for their research degrees um, on, on, on Buddhism. So it does have, you will have in class both uh, uh, students uh, who, who may be um, interested generally about Buddhism or students who have very clear ideas of what they want to get out of the course. And that, that brings a very interesting dynamic um, to all, to, really to all courses. Um, okay, I'd like to go on really a little bit uh, more so afterwards we can take your questions. Um, teach, how do we teach? Uh, there are variety, uh, there's a variety of teaching methods, so it's difficult to say it just in one, uh, in one words, but uh, you will have regular lectures followed by seminars, or you will have interactive lectures uh, where um, uh, the, the, the lecturer would be open to interruptions, to, to discussion within the lecture, so very fluid format. In any case, what I really um, uh, want to stress is that active participation from, uh, from, from, from the students is always uh, um, required, welcomed and encouraged. Um, so that, that, that is the, 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 the way of learning, of learning more and of being, of learning together, let's say, let's put it like that. Um, I also want to say something else about uh, the new modes of learning that have been introduced uh, uh, last year because of the, um, of the need to teach um, online. 
um, although we are now already back uh, on campus for most of the classes, but not for all, uh, we have maintained a kind of double uh, um, a mode of teaching, both what we call asynchronous learning and synchronous learning. So there is a lot of uh, uh, material that you find uh, online on the uh, dedicated pages of each module, which allows for asynchronous learning. Um, and, and that is uh, to uh, that adds to the contact time that takes place in class or with your peers. So these, uh, these two modes have uh, actually worked out pretty well in, uh, um, in increasing the occasions uh, to, uh, to learn. Um, as teaching is different from course to course, also assessment is different from, uh, um, from module to module. Uh, but generally speaking, uh, we, uh, 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 the, the, the modules are assessed by coursework, which means uh, um, essays or written uh, work uh, rather than exams. Obviously, language courses will have exams, but hardly any other course has exams. And that is because we do uh, want to encourage uh, a critical approach that is more uh, uh, obviously um, uh, unfolding through written, uh, uh, written work and also to develop uh, uh, a bit your research skills, whether you will be using it for a further degree or you will be using uh, in all other uh, career paths that, uh, um, that you will uh, embark. Uh, so when I mean um, co written coursework, I mean the traditional format of an essay, but also case studies, the response papers, uh, um, uh, reviews, so the, a range of uh, uh, different uh, uh, written work that is uh, meant to hone your, um, your skills. Um, some modules have also class presentations, whether individual or in group. Uh, most modules will have seminar participations. Um, and uh, uh, also we also introduced some uh, uh, formative assessment, which means uh, um, assessment that is not marked, so you don't, get, you don't need to worry about your uh, uh, final uh, uh, mark for that assessment, but that helps you to develop the skills you need to, uh, let's say, to write a good essay, for instance. Um, so that's, that's what I can say about the assessment. The class attendance is, uh, has always been compulsory, but in fact, um, MA students are normally very happy to be in uh, uh, in class and to uh, take advantage of uh, the opportunity offered uh, by uh, not only the lecture herself, uh, but also by uh, the discussions with their peers. Uh, Almost all, I mean, all the, uh, we are all, all staff members are uh, very much available for student consultations. Uh, we have uh, our uh, dedicated office hours, uh, but uh, we also offer uh, uh, quite a good deal of supervision for uh, um, not only for the final dissertation, but also uh, consultation for writing your essays. So there, there is a lot of guidance uh, besides the uh, contact hours during the teaching itself. Uh, this maybe we don't need to do it, uh, or if there are questions, we'll come back to the numbers of hours that the programs are supposed to, to retain. I wanted to say just one word and then I'll stop about the fact that uh, although the um, curriculum of the, of the program itself is uh, uh, quite intense and quite full, uh, there are, there's much more happening at SOAS, and uh, we do hope that the MA students coming into the program will make the most of it. Um, I mentioned uh, um, earlier on the center, and I'll come back in a minute, but first of all, the library. Um, SOAS library is one of uh, uh, the world's most important academic library for the study of uh, what we say Asia, Africa, and the Middle East, but in our case, for the study of Buddhism. And there are other very important resources in the area where SOAS is, which is called Bloomsbury, for those of you who are not familiar with London, both in terms of library, like the British Library, for instance, and museums. The British Museum, again, is very close by, and we often organize some um, 
uh, event together. Um, there are also many talks and uh, uh, guest lectures and seminars offered across the school in departments or research centers. And they are really a treasure trove for uh, getting uh, familiar with uh, maybe uh, uh, little topics within the study of Buddhism that um, are not covered in class. And uh, uh, here I, uh, I present a few things about the Center of Buddhist Studies, uh, which is a fla our flagship and one of the oldest center of uh, Buddhist studies in the country and which I'm the, the chair of at the moment. Um, we have two series of lectures um, one is a dedicated lecture on Chinese Buddhism, which is uh, uh, supported by the whole foundation. And another one is one of the really the oldest uh, uh, lecture series called the Buddhist Forum, um, that is more broadly on all aspects of Buddhism. Often these, uh, um, these lectures are joined by um, uh, occasions for seminar-like discussions with uh, uh, postgraduate students, uh, um, both PhDs and MAs. So uh, there, there is really a lot to take from them. And there is an outreach series that is funded by the Kinsa Foundation it's called Buddhism Inside Out. And we have we've covered the different themes through the years. And what we have looked at uh, uh, death and Buddhism, we have looked at meditation, we have looked at uh, um, uh, sound, music, and Buddhism. So th these are very open lectures to a broader public, uh, not necessarily the academic one. And you can see the events on our website. There are other relevant research centers um, according to the geographical areas that you are interested uh, in. There's a Center for the Study of Japanese Religions. There is a South uh, Asian Institute. There is a Center for Yoga Studies. And then there are other um, uh, regional uh, uh, centers of the China Institute, there is a um, Korean Institute and so on. So uh, uh, research is very much uh, um, an our interest. Um, and equally, there are some extracurricular activities that are not, um, that are not uh, uh, part of the uh, credit that of, of the credit building but that, that have been um, very much appreciated by MA students they're not meant originally for MA students but MA students have often uh, taken part in it and I put down here on the slide a reading group in Chinese Buddhist text uh, which uh, seemed to be very popular this year with the uh, with this year's cohort okay I think I will stop here and I'd like to take uh, any question that you may have or anything that um, you want to hear further. Hello, the chair. Hi. Hi, my name is Ayako. Thank you very much for your seminar today. Thank you for um, attending. Where are you <laughs> joining us from? Um, I live in England. Okay. Um, um, Ackfield, um, which is one hour and a half um, minutes away from London. So, and then I used to be um, taking an MA course, uh, MA translation course at Tawas, ah, 2012. Okay. So you are already <laughs> so, familiar with the system. Yes, it, yes. <laughs> and then this time I'm very um, interested in a Buddhism course uh, <laughs> for my um, um, sort of career and my like. Um, it, it will be my live research. That is what I feel now. So this will be uh, the beginning of it, I hope. Oh, that's very so, nice to hear. Yes. So um, uh, there's some, uh, four questions I have. Um, the first one is that um, um, if, if it's at all possible to provide us some reading uh, list, if at all possible, um, because I don't have academic um, Buddhism knowledge. Yeah. I'm very interested in, and then I, I've grown up in Japan. So I, you know, I'm, I know what Buddhism 
looks like is in a <laughs> yeah 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 in a daily life you know yeah. but not in academic way so i'm i'm reading um uh academic uh buddhism uh, books in japanese right now but if there are some um recommendations um or reading list in english um written in english that would be really really helpful and then i could uh, make the most of the course as well before you know entering in so um yeah that's the first question um i um this is a question is a recurrent question <laughs> actually uh, so I can supply a couple of uh, uh, a couple of general books, but um, yep. uh, my colleagues do not agree with uh, giving out a reading list before students apply. Of and course, yes, program. I understand. So yes. I I can supply because I'm the convener, so I get oh I it's it's me the one who gets this question, but. My <laughs> Uh, there is there is a lot of reluctance to do that. So I yeah, of course, yeah. beforehand, um, I'll be happy to do that after maybe we have seen the applications. So All if right. you can come back, if you can come back to me, um, I certainly can um, can provide you a couple of um, sort of introductory courses. Yes, yes, yeah, introductory is yeah, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes, thank you, thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely, um, thank you. Right. Um, so um, the second question is that, well, um, you mentioned um, uh, that, you know, students are now back to the uh, the campus, yes. um, most of them. But um, um, I have uh, little children, two of them, and then maybe sometimes I have to take, <laughs> um, uh, you know, I, I cannot join the, the lecture when, you know, they are in sick or something and then i was wondering if there is a possibility of um like joining your lecture online of course uh, with the video so that you can see you know i'm actually here <laughs> you know? um at the moment it is possible we teach uh, so i teach all my classes both online um i mean i teach in class but um on zoom so we it, that is possible because the situation at the moment is not such yeah um that we Not, can avoid that yeah. there are students who are sometimes ill um and mm -hmm. the, the government has still allowed some asian students some uh, for um not non-domestic students to join online up to i think mm. this year is up april although we expect everyone from january on so in principle right. in principle um we would like to keep the system uh but i can't tell you exactly how um, uh, one thing that I can say is that we actually have always recorded our lectures, even before, oh, I see. even before the, um, um, uh, the, the pandemic as, uh, as part of our strategy for helping students, uh, because we have also a pretty large number of foreign students to, uh, you know, to look back at the lectures and to, to clarify something with themselves. Uh, uh, so if it is an occasional, um, an occasional, uh, uh, yeah, absence, yeah, yeah, um, there will be a way to to get back the material of the. Oh uh, right, okay, that would be great. We do hope. I I, I think uh, uh, we all would like to keep this opportunity to um, to do it uh, online synchronously, unless. I mean, it has worked quite well. You know, you don't hear 100% when the students speak, but you certainly hear the the uh, the teachers and those who are closer to the mics because we don't have, a, a, you know, it's not that all of a sudden we could uh, organize yeah. all uh, uh, classrooms and so on uh, with uh, <laughs> huge systems that you needed to do really yeah. uh, synchronic things. That that is an exp a, a level of expenses that is out of our uh, uh, feasibility. But but we we are doing it because we are, we were we had already the equipment there to record uh, lectures. So lovely. Um, it has it has been working pretty well, I must say, this year. Um, okay. It has happened that you know, once one student is actually one got covered, the other one was uh, really feeling sick and didn't feel like joining the others uh, just in case. So these kind of things uh, um, at this moment, uh, unfortunately, mm -hmm. happen. So we hope to keep that system. <laughs> hope, okay. but, but, it is, but I want to say it's not it's not going to be an online delivery course. 
Then of course, yes. Yeah, I would like to join, like, the, you know, face-to-face, yeah, -face, of uh, course. Uh, I mean, because we have also built, we, we worked so hard to build a lot of uh, what, what I said are called asynchronic um, uh, yeah. resources. So mm -hmm. we, you know, we want to, we have learned that, so we can as well, <laughs> or what we have learned to make things available more broadly. And if, if we manage really to find a good balance, and if it works well this year, mm -hmm. and uh, we, may, we may think to have it for a uh, longer period, because last year, the fact that we were online actually meant that uh, many students joined from all sides of the world. And uh, it was really uh, different than I, it was very interesting. Uh, and they would not have been able to join because maybe they are work, people work or um, were doing like a second degree and something like that. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. Okay. So, so I Thank think you. Yes, I think there shouldn't be any problem. Um, yes. But yes. but yes, keep it. If you let's say if you had said that you are in Japan and you're not coming, I would have said, well, no, this is. <laughs> of course, yes. Of course. But if it's uh, just occasional. I think I'm sure that there would be. I mean, there are certainly um, yes. there's material on on the on the dedicated pages. We have a mm -hmm. platform. For students where we put all our material including the recordings so oh okay that that would be great because that you know once once i'm in i would like to make the most of it so Absolutely. Yes, thank you Absolutely. thank you okay and uh, i'll be quick so oh yeah the last question would be um are uh, is there any chance to you know chat with the current students because i'm interested in um what uh, the current uh, buddhism students are doing for instance for the dissertation um i found uh you know there is a, a page so a page that you can chat online but i couldn't find um anyone from buddhism course so um, um I, I, just wanted... I don't know that so we'll have to be organized i in um, later on in the year i used to have one of the students uh, joining us when we were on campus for the um open day uh, so to right. speak a bit about what they do, um, mm -hmm. but if you want to know only about the dissertation, we, we had planned to put a, a number of titles on uh, our website just to give an idea. I uh, Now that you mention it, it seems not to have happened. Uh, I'd asked uh, our offices to do it uh, just to give yeah. an idea, what, but the themes are, are, are um, uh, really very broad, depending on... Yes, the, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I believe so. Yes. <laughs> So it depends on on every every year will be different. I don't think I've had, I mean, I've almost never had the same dissertation topic. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because everyone comes with their own interest. Uh, so there mm. are in the dissertation that go from uh, I don't know very philosophical analysis of the mandalas uh, to. Mm. Um, you know the role of Ashoka uh, in mm. uh, in uh, in East Asia and mm. uh, or or in India to um, what what would say the kind of institutional problems of contemporary Buddhism in um, mm. in Japan or uh, Chinese uh, Buddhism and environment. So there have been really such a variety of yeah. We we do have and we hope to keep it at the moment. We still have a prize for the dissertation in Buddhist studies, so which is uh, sponsored by the Kense. I can tell you that uh, um, some of them should be online on the website of the center. Uh, the winning, you can look at that for the winning, um, the winning uh, uh, presentation. Maybe it, Rachel, if you are still there, would you mind to go into the website of the Center of Buddhist Studies and, and look at the Kiense Prize for dissertation? Maybe we can share that page with the students here. So you can look at that. Yeah, one moment. You, you can look at that yourself. Um, and if, if we have a minute, I'll do it myself later on. But is that all? Maybe we should ask if there are other questions from other attendees today. Um, I see a Talisha and Marilina. Any question here? Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, I don't have any question because I arrived a little bit late. I will see the uh, recording later on. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Yes, we don't hear you very well. Actually. Thank you. Thank you. Thank so, you. Uh, do you hear me? Yes. Oh, perfect. Uh, yeah, I arrived a little bit later too because I had to pick up a package and there was some issues. So, um, hi, I'm Talisa. I'm coming from Netherlands. And um, so I do, I'm not sure if I missed out on it uh, in the beginning of the lecture. Um, so that's why I'm happy it's also recorded. But I'm currently doing a master in international relations where I specifically focus on um, the direction of culture and politics and how that plays a role. And so I've been really focusing on the Buddhist approach to international relations. Oh, fantastic. Yes, and I was wondering if that would be okay to then apply for this master because I don't know what is like the the application requirements. Um, the application, do you mean the availability? So where did, yes. you, come, did you come in uh, when I'm we were talking about the, the program? Yes, yes, I'm from the Netherlands and I'm currently studying at Leiden University. Yeah, 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 yeah. I understand that. Um, oh, okay. uh, in Leiden you are studying. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's actually my alma mater. Oh, okay, okay. Yes, I did my PhD in Leiden. Wow. So I'm familiar wow. with the institution. No, I think it's very interesting. It's a very interesting perspective um, that uh, you can certainly uh, carry out in, uh, uh, in the program. And in fact, we are organized, I was talking about all these extracurricular activities that we have. Yeah. And one of the of those that we are going to organize it was supposed to be this year, but because it's so complicated with the with with the current pandemic, but will be for next year is a um, a series of lectures with the International Red Cross. Oh wow! Um, to speak exactly of uh, uh, of this international uh, uh, relation focusing on Buddhism and their activities uh, that that have already been carried out, and they want to go on carrying out. One of our um, staff members is uh, is involved in uh, uh, in this international uh, um, events related to Buddhism. So, I mean, yeah, what happens, uh, um, mm -hmm. you know, in uh, in India, in, uh, in in Sri Lanka, and so on. So it, it, that that would be exactly basically what mm -hmm. you would like to do, right? Mm -hmm. And one thing that um, I spoke about uh, assessment, generally speaking, but one thing that I didn't say is that in most of these courses, certainly I know, uh, can't remember about Buddhist uh, meditation, but certainly in uh, East Asian, Chinese, uh, Japanese, um, you are, and also in critical concepts, you are free to choose the topic of your essays. So you can build the, the program around your interest also because of that. Uh, so uh, let's say that you want to write, uh, to, to, to write every um, in every course on, uh, a perspective that we may want to call that of international relations. And this, I mean, international relations is very broad, so it depends on what you mean, but, but you could focus in all your essays um, on, on that point of view, let's say, yeah. um, via consultation with the, with the, with the uh, personal teachers of these courses. And, and so really um, use what you learn in class to build up your knowledge. Mm -hmm. and apply it to the question of uh you know it, let's say international relations yeah that's that's great that's great and so when i'm applying um i it's okay if i just like send in my ba uh, uh, degree but then also like a, a great list up until now because obviously i didn't finish my master yet when yeah, I'm yeah. no it's okay we normally the selection is then uh, via the BA, so I, I have to say that I'm, uh, I'm I'm the academic advisor. So the admission, the uh, professional services, so the offices will be taking care of all the admission regulations okay. and so on. Um, so the the application will come to me only as a um, as an academic advice. Uh, so as the academic uh, uh, choosing it, but you have a statement to write in the application. So the application is online. You can look at it already. Yeah, if you go on the program. So you'll see you have to write a statement. And I think there is where you can write uh, what you have done so far, what you want to get out of the degree. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but I mean, it's absolutely it will be um, absolutely OK. We are um, quite flexible on uh, uh, the previous um, academic uh, a course of students coming into the program exactly because Buddhism is such a, a wide 
um, a kind of a field of inquiry and can be approached in so many ways. And also um, some students have a very um, different knowledge that maybe, you know, they may have been 20 a practitioners for 20 years. And in fact, they know a lot of details about Buddhism. And so what they need at that point is more the kind of framework, the academic framework. While there are students maybe like you who have not really studied Buddhism and then want to get the story, uh, uh, you know, in its entirety, so to speak. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the course uh, it works uh, for both kinds of students. So it's it's a difficult course to teach. I'll tell you. <laughs> so far, so far has been um, has been quite successful to cater to both uh, these uh, uh, these types of students. Yeah, it sounds amazing. Thank you. Thanks. Um, I see there's something in the chat. Oh, yes. Um, so Rachel put, um, let me see if I can open it. Uh, the grants available. Um, actually, that's not what I meant, uh, but uh this this news i think maybe um for some reasons it's always echo here can you see my screen no i should stop sharing sorry i'll share another screen here share can you see this screen um center yeah, i can see it, it. So under the news, you will see the Kinsey Foundation Award for Outstanding, um, well, actually it's MA dissertation. Why is it written PhD dissertation? So if you open it, I don't know. Oh, that's a different one. Sorry, sorry. That's not given by SOAS. Uh, I think maybe uh, these are the SOAS the ones. Oh, so much. I, I cannot control the website, so, but somewhere here that should be, um, you see this one? Yes. So this, this is, for instance, a, a um, the award for the, this, the MA dissertation. And uh, so you can see the title here of the dissertation and something about uh, the student. And, and yeah, she did the presentation for the open day last year. Maybe we have that recorded and we could put it um, on the website. Maybe Rachel, maybe we can look into that later on. Yeah, sure. So, but Ayako, this gives you an idea maybe. Yes, certainly, yes, I will. I will read this later on. Thank you very much. You can read this. And if you look down there, there must be, this must be also the same award. Yes, these are the same awards. And they are, they are for MA and PhD students. They used to be for both now, and they're only for the MA students. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Thank you. We are almost um, at the end of the um, session. There are any other questions, any other comments that you have? Um, nothing. Yeah, thank you very much for today. Okay, then. <laughs> Thanks to you, to all of you, to join us. And um, I hope to receive your applications for the program. I look forward to meeting you at us. Yes, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thanks everyone, goodbye. Thank, thank you, you. Bye. goodbye. Bye.